This is Darrell. I want to talk about the debate between all the Jokers. Who was the best Joker? Heath Ledger. Joaquin Phoenix. I did a couple of videos on the Joker. I was excited about both Jokers, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. But it was just news that I actually heard. I didn't see it on the news. I heard it. I saw it on Facebook or something like that. Zoe Kravitz, Lenny Kravitz's daughter, Lisa Bonet's daughter, they are really proud of her because she got casted as the new Catwoman in the updated version of Batman starring Robert Patterson. And that is great. That is some great news. But it got me to thinking, who is the best Catwoman? Who is the best Catwoman? Um, the four out of the four, you got... Michelle Pfeiffer, Eartha Kitt, I'm going way back, Eartha Kitt, you know, she was the original um, African-American Catwoman. Then you had Holly Berry's version of Catwoman. And the, really, I loved Cat, Catwoman with Holly Berry. I don't know if it was Holly Berry, but I loved that movie. I saw it many times when I was a teenager. <laughs> but anyway, so I ended up seeing the differences with the Catwoman's. My favorite Catwoman, however, was Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman 2, Tim Burton version of Batman. Um, now, I don't know if Zoe has shown me through any movie that she's done, and I've seen her in several movies and TV shows. I don't know if she gives me that edge. She gives you that mystery. She's very Lisa Bonet in terms of she she's beautiful, but you don't really know her and know who she is. Um, Lenny Kravitz is, is kind of the same way. So she's she's that's that, those are the apples that fell from the tree. She is the apple, or whatever <laughs> what they say. You know what I'm saying. As far as Zoe Kravitz playing Catwoman, it's gonna be interesting to see her in this take because she's gonna to have to kind of bring it because DC has been failing. DC has been tripping out with all the, the the movies that they've came out with, with the superheroes such as Batman versus Superman that they tried to do that didn't seem to quite work other than with Wonder Woman. That Zoe Kravitz is somehow related to Aquaman. Did he have any pull in them casting Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman because she didn't give me that vibe. I actually just totally skipped over Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. I should have added her in so it'd be five Catwomen, but I, I think I forgot because I think everybody else did. Unfortunately, she didn't give a very Catwoman vibe. She was more like a burglar. So it was, it was different. It wasn't like Michelle Pfeiffer's version where she took on a role, she ate that role, bodied that role. You know, Catwoman has the ability. She has the ability to get a single movie and give it that Joker feel. If you get the right directors, the right cinematographers and the right story, you put all those together, you get the right actress. But being that Zoe is kind of quiet, she kind of a mystery. I, I don't know what she can bring other than just being sexy, beautiful to the role. She might have something in there, but I wonder what did they see in her or was it more of a family connection? She has a famous dad and a famous mom and a famous stepdad, and he's closely related to the DC universe right now. Um, it, it's nice to see another African-American Catwoman, but... We need somebody to compete with Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, let's be honest here. Michelle Pfeiffer was the best Catwoman that I could think of. But then if I go back, 
Eartha Kitt was the essence and the blueprint of the Catwoman that they wanted um, and that they always tried to make. So I can't forget about Eartha Kitt because she was the one that kind of started the whole attitude Catwoman vibe. Don't give a fuck Catwoman. You know, that's the kind of Catwoman that people like. And you can really embody that role in a lot of different ways, but as long as you have that badass element to it. But Zoe Kravitz playing it, I think she's going to have to prove a lot with the role because of the struggles that DC is having. If she does, it's going to be a big smash hit. If she does, it's going to help her career even more, or it could kill her career. I mean, it's, this is a pressure role because they already cast uh, Robert Pattinson into the role of Batman and people was just, tr I still see him as a vampire, to be honest. So he really got to prove himself as well. So it's almost like you got two lead actors in a movie that they have to prove themselves to be the superior of the character's version of Batman. And that's going to be a hard job to do. Um, I, I wouldn't have minded. I mean, if you've seen Lisa Bonet, I mean, if you see how she looks and she's kept herself up, I mean, I wouldn't mind her playing Catwoman because she still has it. She still, whatever she had that made her mark, she still got it. And you let me know what you feel about Zoe Kravitz playing Catwoman in the new Batman remake for DC. They need to go the Joker route. One more tip. DC needs to do the Joker route. They need to be serious. They need to do the Dark Knight type of serious action movie with special effects, big budget. They don't need to compete with Marvel. Um, Marvel, I don't know what's going on with Marvel either. They kind of, I don't know, ever since Endgame, I don't know if they're slowing down to try to re-excite us. They're trying to give us a break. But I haven't heard anything about Marvel's projects lately. And I usually see stuff every other day, you know. So you let me know my social media handles at the bottom of the video. Please subscribe. If you don't subscribe, then you won't have access to the prize cash offerings that I'm going to give. The sweepstakes, the different things and promotions surrounding my books, t-shirts, anything that I get my hands on that's a giveaway worthy. Um, I definitely want you to know about it and be a part of it. So you need to sign up. And also, one more thing. I got a book called Scare of the Light, The Dream Memoirs of Russell Banks. It is out right now. My new book that's coming out, that's about to drop very, very soon, is called The Brown Paper Bag Boys and the Colorism Experiment. That is a real book. It is like something I can't even believe I wrote. It took me two years. I put so much energy into it and it has so much realness and rawness. It's not a teen fantasy book like I did before. This is like a real coming of age, growing up through the hood, boys in the hood type of thing. This is also with colorism involvement in it that gives it that deeper, deeper sense that it is not just your average movie. It has not been done before. All right, so definitely hit my website up, scaredthelight.com. Please subscribe, like, and share my video. I do appreciate you for your time, and thank you. I will talk to you and see you in the next video. Peace.